Hello, I'm Colin Primrose. I'm a radiology registrar based in Glasgow, Scotland, and this is a short refresher on case space and time-resolved MRA. I wrote some of these slides with Giles Roditi and Peter Douglas, so I'd like to acknowledge them. So the aim of this talk is to give a brief overview of two key concepts in contrast-enhanced MRA, that being case space and time-resolved imaging. We're going to start with case space. So case space is basically a grid of raw data, a visual representation of the echo signal. The case space data is converted into the MR image using a complex mathematical method called a Fourier transform. Now case space can be difficult to understand, but there are only two important principles that you need to remember. The data at the center of case space contains information on contrast, and at the periphery, there's information about edge definition. The second point is every point in case space contributes to every pixel in the final image. The X and Y axes in case space represent spatial frequencies rather than position. High signal values tend to have low spatial frequencies. This means that the center of case space gives contrast and brightness information, and conversely, the periphery of case space gives edge detail. When we apply this to most MR images, it's slightly difficult to appreciate why this is significant. You can see here we've just got the center, and we just have really have contrast and not much edge detail. And here we have the periphery. We don't have much contrast, but we do have some edge definition. But when we apply this to angiograms, its importance is slightly more obvious. You can see here we have contrast because we have the center of case space, and here we have very little contrast edge definition because we have the periphery. So as the periphery of case space is added, there's increased detail of the vessel wall. When we remove more of the center of case space, we lose signal intensity. The center of case space must be filled during the peak contrast, when the contrast is passing through the vascular bed. Acquiring less case space takes less time, so we can image much faster if we're selective. Looking at these images, you might then ask, why don't we only image the center of case space and make a very fast sequence? Which brings us to point two. Every point in case space contributes to each and every pixel in the final image. A Fourier transform is a highly complex mathematical process which unpacks the superimposed waveforms into their constituent parts. This has the effect that any artifact or error in case space filling spreads the artifact across the entire image. More importantly, anything we change in the acquisition which reduces the sampling of case space, reduces the information available for generating the final image, that's to say, signals to noise. This can be overcome in contrast-enhanced MRA by ensuring good timing with the contrast bolus, thereby using the increased signal intensity generated by the contrast medium. We've already discussed how the center of case space contains information that is important for angiography and how timing of the acquisition after the contrast injection is crucial. But for the best quality angiograms, it's important that the center of case space is filled to coincide with the passage of the contrast agent. In theory, these images could be attained at the same sequence, start at the same time, simply by choosing to fill the case space at either the beginning, middle, or end of the acquisition. In practice, the best method is usually to commence the sequence as close to the contrast peak as possible and immediately fill the center of case space. Now case space ordering, there's various ways that case space can be filled and which method used slightly depends on its application. A classic method of filling case space in MR imaging is linear or Cartesian case space filling, but there's various other methods that are used Specifically in angiography, where we're able to fill the center of case space first before the periphery. And here's a few examples of these different methods. Now we'll see how this applies to time-resolved MRA. Now contrast-enhanced MRA is viewed as slow because the examination takes longer than a CT angiogram. But the lack of ionizing radiation means that the sequence can be ran again and again, and this gives us dynamic imaging, and this is one of the main strengths of contrast-enhanced MRA. In the lower limb, it allows pure arterial imaging without the distraction of venous overlay, even if the contrast arrives to the legs at different times. Imaging over multiple time points gives information not only of flow rate, 
but also a flow direction. This patient had lower abdominal discomfort, which is worse at the end of the day. Time-resolved MRA clearly shows brisk retrograde flow into the gonadal vein, confirming venous incompetence in keeping with pelvic congestion syndrome. There is excellent correlation with digital subtraction angiography. This acquisition shows a spinal dural arterial venous fistula. While a single time point angiogram would have demonstrated the fistula, time-resolved imaging reveals the feeding T7 reticular artery and the T9 supply to the artery of Adamkowitz. This allows fistula embolization to proceed directly to the causative artery and avoiding the risk to compromise the arterial supply to the spinal cord. Time-resolved MRA is a spoiled gradient echo sequence that uses multiple acceleration techniques using view sharing. View sharing involves filling the center of case space over a short period of time and underfilling the rest. The missing data from the periphery of case space is filled from time points at either side to gather enough data to reconstruct a full image. So the center of case space is filled during each acquisition. The periphery is partially filled during each acquisition and then stitched together to create the full image. Each time point can be reconstructed as a whole image, but time-resolved images are most often viewed as subtracted thick section maximum intensity projections. This shows the flow dynamics and allows all time points to be viewed quickly, allowing the reader to rapidly choose the best image to demonstrate the anatomy or physiology as required. Different vendors choose different ways on how to perform view sharing in order to create their own time resolve package, each with their own name. These can sample case space in different shapes like rectangles or ovals, and they vary in how much of the case space they sample and how often. They all start with sampling the entire case space, and the frame rate of the acquisition is determined by how often they sample the center of case space. Now we'll just finish with some take home points. As we know, the center of case space gives us contrast, periphery gives us detail, and we don't need to acquire them at the same time. But every point in case space contributes to that final image. And in time resolved MRA, there are numerous methods by which case space can be filled. And a basic working knowledge of this is important to ensure optimal contrast. Thanks very much. Feel free to email me with any questions. I'd like to acknowledge uh, some of the expertise I've drawn on to understand contrast enhanced MRA, that being the slides of Christopher, Francois, Jeff Mackey, Charles Dumoulin, Elizabeth Hecht, Jasra Diti, Kevin DeMarco, and Peter Douglas. Thank you very much. Bye.